Okay, so now we're going to shift into um, some more technology-focused topics, specifically LED lighting. Our main sponsor for the AVF Summit is uh, Fluence Bioengineering, and I'm really excited to invite uh, Nick Klass to come and speak on the fundamentals of light and its impact on vertical farming. So we'll ask Nick Klass to come up. Uh, in, in your programs, there are bios about all of our speakers. So look at that and uh, check them out. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. How's everybody doing today? Ready to dive into lighting at mid-afternoon nap time? All right, so what we're going to talk today, uh, we're going to talk about LED lighting and lighting in general. Um, lighting is pretty complex, you know, for how many lighting experts do we have in the room? I know I heard somebody say from Osram. How many people would say kind of mediocre knowledge? How about beginner? Okay. Yeah, so we're going to dig into lighting, but specifically, specifically how does it impact vertical farming? Um, again, my name is Nick Clays. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Fluence Bioengineering. We're out of Austin, Texas. Um, many people in this room probably haven't heard of this name, but you've probably heard of where I've been before, and we'll give you a quick background of that. So uh, 15 years ago, I started uh, working at the largest lighting company in North America, a company called Acuity Brands Lighting. And we sold over $2 billion of lights uh, manufactured in 20 or 30 plants around North America. So this is uh, New, York uh, New York City streetscape. Uh, we made a lot of street lights. Uh, and this is your high pressure sodium, basically the same lights that you would use in a traditional greenhouse. Uh, we also, um, a large electronics chain, we did a lot of retail lighting. This is a store called Best Buy. I'm not sure if they're in Europe, but in the US it's a very popular store. You can see this is metal halide. Um, so both in the street lighting and then in the retail, and then we also did quite a bit in warehouse lighting, taking down, again, this would have been a retrofit, taking down metal halide, putting up, hype, or I'm sorry, uh, T5HO fluorescent lighting. Uh, so when I was in this industry, I was, you know, basically, uh, I had a very special task. I, I did strategic pricing for the company, so I really didn't have a love towards lighting. It was just, you could have pretty much put me in any industry, uh, but I knew a lot about lighting. And then uh, after I got my MBA, I was given a $10 million division to run at the Acuity Brands, and that was on the first forefront of when LED lighting started to come out, and then it was really a part of the street lighting, and I started seeing that. And then I started getting excited about LED, because here comes this compound semiconductor that was this first real breakthrough technology that the lighting industry had ever experienced. And so I started getting uh, excited about it, and I wanted to be a part of it. I was also living in uh, central Ohio, which is very dark uh, most of the year, doesn't get a lot of sun. And uh, being part photosynthetic myself, I needed to go somewhere where there was a little more sun. And I ended up going down to Austin, Texas, and I joined a company called Illumitex. Uh, I was actually the first lighting guy that uh, was hired by the company. And when I went there, these are the types of projects that we were looking at. So we made a white LED. Uh, we had a factory in Penang, Malaysia. And we were chasing white light retrofit projects. Um, we didn't get a lot of traction in that space back then. And again, it wasn't really exciting to me. But then we ended up uh, getting involved in this project, which at the time I believe was the world's largest vertical farm, uh, and it was in um, College Station, Texas. Uh, it was a DARPA-funded DARPA funded project, so we were doing vaccine creation through you know, plant uh, biomass here. Uh, this project had over 17,000 light bars in it, so it, it was a very, very large project. You can just start to see the beginning of this project, and this building literally uh, was just humongous. So after a management change at that company, I decided I was going to leave and start my own company. I thought it was a good time. Uh, so I left with uh, the chief operating officer of that company. Uh, we left Illumitex, and we started a company called Build My LED. And uh, the idea at that company was we were going to build any customer, any spectrum, any length, with any optical distribution. So really empowering the research community to figure out how does wavelength impact life uh, via photobiology. Uh, we did that for uh, about a year and a half, and then we actually got back into horticulture lighting because we had a 12-month non-compete when we left the previous company. So when we got back into horticulture lighting, we started a company called BML Horticulture. So you may have heard of BML Horticulture. Uh, this is a vertical cannabis farm that's in downtown San Francisco, literally right in the middle of the city. Um, uh, it was a three-level cannabis grow. Uh, this was one of our first fixtures we came out with. You can see it was still a pink light, and we called this the spider light. And um, moving forward then to a couple years, we recently rebranded the company about eight months ago to Fluence Bioengineering. 
And you can see this is another vertical farm in uh, downtown San Jose, California, another cannabis farm, but vertical. And if you see, this is our latest generation of the spider technology, but you can see it's a very broad based spectrum. So it's a very white light. We're as a company moving and migrating away from the pink light for multiple reasons. But um, this is a, again, another vertical farm for cannabis. So regardless of your personal views for cannabis, I can tell you there are, I think somebody had a slide up earlier saying maybe there's 10 vertical farms in the US right now. Uh, I can tell you on the cannabis side, there's many, many more than that. So regardless of your views on cannabis, there's actually a lot of money uh, in the cannabis market right now funding a lot of uh, innovation that will, I believe, will transport into the food production market of uh, vertical farms. Uh, this is our latest fixture for the greenhouse. Uh, this is called Viper. Uh, the reason I'm putting the slide up here is because this was a grower uh, in Virginia on the east coast of the U.S. named Shenandoah Growers, a uh, very large fresh herb grower. Uh, and the reason I put this slide here is, yes, they did put some of our new uh, top light solutions in, but they've recently actually bought over 12,000 light bars uh, from us to do vertical farming. Uh, they have some IP that they're filing right now, so I can't show you a lot of pictures, but this is a big breakthrough uh, product or project for them. And it's very exciting because you're seeing somebody in traditional agriculture with greenhouses migrating in and putting money down on the line. Uh, and they spent quite a bit of money to put this farm together. So this is going to be very exciting to hopefully show you uh, the next time we get together. So that's my background. So let's jump into light real quick and specifically into vertical farming. So the three key pieces I'm going to talk about briefly today, one will be photobiology quick basics there, a little bit about the economics of lighting in vertical farms, and then third, some key metrics that if you're evaluating lighting systems for your own farm, some things that you should be looking at. So on lighting fundamentals, if you go back to grade school and you remember the electromagnetic radiation spectrum, you have forms of radiation from gamma rays and x-rays and ultraviolet and infrared and wa radio waves, and right in between there's a little gap up here from about 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers a range that we call PAR. So if you've been around grow lights and you're looking at any type of grow light, people talk about PAR, which is photosynthetically active radiation. It's just a classification, meaning these photons in this wave band are basically going to promote photosynthesis in your plants. So a photon, we talk about photon, but I'll throw that out there because some people need a refresh on photon. So the photon is the smallest particle of light, the, the quantum level of light. And it actually has a pretty interesting uh, duality uh, into its ex existence. It's actually in the form of a wave, but it's also a particle. So it gets into some pretty complex physics. Uh, but in the, you can think about photons as how many of them, and you can count them. And then when we talk about the wavelengths, because down here we talk 400 to 700 nanometers, what we're actually talking about is you're measuring, I don't think I have a laser here, but if you look at the peak to peak or the trough to trough on that wavelength, if you would get out a really tiny little ruler and measure peak to peak or trough to trough, you're actually measuring how long those are. So the, different, the shorter the wavelengths, the more energy, and also you get the bluer wavelengths versus as they start to spread out, you get into the red wavelengths, they have a longer wavelength. So a nanometer is one billionth of a meter, just as a reference here. So photobiology 101, we talk about the interaction of light and life. Uh, there's three pillars in our estimation on photobiology, things that you need to be looking at. One is photosynthesis, and this is where we're using light as the energy source to convert carbon dioxide, and water into promoting carbohydrate uh, production in the plant. Basically, this is going to drive your yield and your biomass creation. And we have another category that we look at as well in lighting projects called photomorphogenesis. And this is basically the impact of wavelengths on the development of the plant uh, and secondary metabolite production. So this is very important because a lot of vertical farmers that we meet with when they're first starting, they want to talk about biomass accumulation. It's all about how much you know, grams per watt can I grow. But if you forget about photomorphogenesis, you leave things out like maybe taste or smell. So it really doesn't matter how much lettuce you grow if it's bitter. And then they go back and they start to realize, okay, maybe we need to look at other aspects of the lighting and how it affects the uh, secondary metabolite production. And third, and this isn't very common in vertical farming, but we have photoperiodism. And so this is how plants react in sensing the basically their circ circadian rhythm. So in fr uh, fruiting and flowering plants, this is very important for certain types of plants. Uh, because it's really the length of the night period that's going to dictate when they're going to flower. Uh, briefly, on the economic front, some things that you should be thinking about, and this is, again, all of our knowledge in vertical farming, we kind of put it together and would say, number one, you're looking to maximize your yield, maximize your yield per cubic space, right? So in the past, we thought about greenhouses, just, uh, uh, just uh, your length and your width and your area, but now we're looking at the cubic space in a vertical farm. It's very important. And we'll talk about how does a lighting system impact that uh, as we wrap this up. Uh, of course, we want to minimize your operating cost per pound. A lot of people are looking at LED to reduce their energy consumption. 
And then really, this, uh, this is this emerging trend that we see right now, is really using LEDs to augment pricing power for the grower. So this is around the consistency of your crop or the quality of your crop. Again, going back to like terpene production for how does the crop smell? What is the appearance of it? So key metrics. I've got seven things here for you to, I guess, I guess it's going to be online later, so you don't need to write these down. But if you're in the market for buying a lighting system, I would challenge you to look at all seven of these things and because uh, they all tie into how efficient that lighting system is going to uh, be for you. So the first we call it PPF. How many people understand PPF? Heard that term. Okay, it means photosynthetic photon flux. In a simple way, it says all light sources are emitting photons, and it basically means how many photons are coming out every second. It doesn't tell you where they go. It just means how, much, how many photons are being created every second. And we, uh, the metric is micromoles per second. Uh, PPFD, when you put the end on it, it's still pho photosynthetic photon flux, but it's the density. This is very important to the growers. The first one, it's important, but this is what's really important to the farmer. This means how many photons are actually pr for every square meter on your plants. So the first one could say I'm putting all the light on the walls and that's not effective, but now we want it on our crop. So PPFD, uh, it's your density of the light. And again, this is micromoles per meter squared per second. And I'll take a quick break there to ask the question, does everybody understand what a micromole is? Anybody understand? Like, get one. Okay, so since we have EuroCup going on here, I figure I'd give you a quick analogy. So a micromole is a number. It's just if I said uh, I've got a dozen soccer balls. How many soccer balls do I have? I've got 12. So when I say I have a micromole, I'm telling you how many uh, photons I have. So I gave you an analogy here. So let's take these soccer balls, and we're going to stack them one on top of the other until we come up with a micromole of soccer balls. Fair enough? All right. Anybody want to guess how tall this is? To the moon? It's a good analogy. Glad I had that in there. Okay, so let's think about how many soccer balls it would take to stack on top of each other to hit the moon. Do you think if you had a micromole, you could hit the moon? You can actually hit the moon, and do you think we can make it back? You can actually make it to the moon and back 176 billion times with stacked soccer balls, and that's one micromole. So most leafy green uh, growers that we work with want, let's say, about 250 micromoles per meter squared per second. You could make that round trip back and forth 44 trillion times every second. That's pretty impressive when you think about lettuce and the kind of abuse it's taking with all these photons. So when we talk about micromoles, it's, a, it's an absolute count. Uh, but I just wanted to show you this. It's a very big number. Okay, so once you have a certain amount of light, one of the things you want to look at is how uniform is that light actually on your crop. And this is when we look at the minimum amount of PAR, the maximum amount of PAR, and then the average. All three of those metrics are very important. So one of the things you're going to ask your lighting manufacturers to give you a PAR map to show you the distribution so you can understand hot spots, the dark spots, the cold spots, and the, again, the average. Spectrum. There's a lot of talk about spectrum today. So we'll play a little game here. First thing you should ask your lighting manufacturer is a spectral chart. Does anybody want to guess what this spectrum chart's from? That's the sunlight. Yep. So we have sunlight as a reference here. It's a pretty broad-based spectrum. Uh, these are the two new spectral uh, compositions we recently uh, released with our new products as we've gone whiter and whiter, and you can see what we're doing is basically filling in the green. Does anybody want to guess what this is? HPS? Did somebody say that? This is fluorescent right here. So if you're growing a vertical farm, fluorescence has been a pretty common technology. This is the spectral chart that you get. Anybody want to guess what this one is? It's LED. It's a purple LED. You can see you've got your blue LED and your red LED, and they combine to make kind of a purple light. Who wants to guess this one? Yep, high-pressure sodium. So you can see the, a lot of it in the orange, and that's why if you remember that streetscape from New York City that I showed earlier, it looked very orange in appearance, and you, so you can see this. Spectral charts are really important. Again, not so much for just pure count of photons, uh, but when you get into photomorphogenesis and the taste and the appearance, this is very important. So make sure you ask your manufacturer for this information. So efficiency. We've got to do this in an efficient manner, right? So the goal is to get the highest PAR output for the least amount of watts input. So we came up with the term that's called micromoles per joule. It basically means how much PAR per watt are you getting. You should ask every manufacturer uh, what that rating is. Uh, this was a 
from a 2014 peer-reviewed journal from Utah State University, when they looked at every lighting technology they could get their hands on, they tested it, and they counted how many photons came out, out of every fixture, and they looked at the energy input going into it. And then by dividing those, you get micromoles per joule or power per watt. So a lot of lighting uh, consumers, the one of the first questions they ask us is, how many watts is that light? And I'd say that's the last question you want to ask. The first should be how much power is coming out of it. And it's kind of a holistic, uh, just a change of how you look at lighting systems. And I'll I tell this to all my customers. You should not consider when you're buying a lighting system, you're not buying light fixtures. You're buying photons. So once you start to make that adjustment mentally and you start looking at, uh, you're not buying lights, so you can't compare them how many dollars per light. You're comparing how many dollars or how many watts to deliver light to your plants. That's such a key metric here. And you can see, if you look at T8 fluorescent, you get 0.84 micromoles per joule. Uh, over here on the left is our new vertical farming fixture. And you can see you get over 200% more light per watt of energy. So again, throw wattage out. Wattage is only going to tell you how much energy you're going to spend with the utility and how much heat load you have to manage in a vertical farm. Uh, the last two things here on this that we'll talk about is when you're looking at a lighting system, consider the physical size of the light, because this impacts when you're building a, we talked about maximizing your cubic space, the physical size of the fixture is very important because of every inch of lighting fixture you have, that's one less inch that you can use, or what is that? An inch is uh, 2.54 centimeters in Europe, a uh, vertical space that you can take up. So the fixture size is very important. Again, this is our new vertical farm fixture. It's about three centimeters tall. And then also the proximity. So how close can you get your lighting fixture to the crop while still having uniform light? So Again, our new fixture, it's about 12 centimeters is what we're recommending to be off of the crop. The closer you can get that while maintaining uniformity allows you to have more vertical layers. And then when you do the economics, when you're penning out the business plan, if you have eight layers and you can get a ninth, or you have nine, you can get that 10th. That's where a lot of contribution margin really falls to the bottom line quickly if you can get that extra layer. So that's my presentation of high level with lighting. Uh, with the basics. Uh, if we had more time, uh, Ed mentioned something earlier when he spoke about LM, uh, uh, or he talked about L70 life, but in the industry we call it LM80, looking at the degradation of how that light's going to, or that fixture, how it degrades over time. That's very important because it does, as Ed mentioned, it's going to translate to yield and crop loss. Uh, you're looking at the components of that lighting system. We talk about that circular aspect. Well, with uh, fluorescent lights, for instance, that use mercury in those lamps, uh, that's not a very sustainable method. Uh, for a lighting system. And CU, it's a fancy word in the lighting industry, we call the coefficient of utilization. And that's a fancy way of saying what percent of the photons coming out, out of your light actually make it to your crop. So digging into that, we don't want to waste any photons. So with that, I'm done. <laughs>